Good morning. Billy, please read the problem, and Bobby, please translate. Flippin' physics. A 0.300 kilogram mass rests on a 0.395 meter long, 0.764 kilogram uniform wooden plank supported by a string as shown in the figure. Stop. The mass of the mass equals 0.300 kilograms. The length of the plank equals 0.395 meters. The mass of the plank equals 0.764 kilograms. Uh, Billy? If the mass is 0.274 meters from the wall, and the angle between the string and the plank is 32.1 degrees, A, what is the force of tension in the string, and B, what is the normal force from the wall? Distance from wall to mass is 0.274 meters. Theta equals 32.1 degrees. Part A, force of tension equals question mark and part B, force normal, equals question mark. Just so you know, we are going to demonstrate this and measure the force of tension in the string and the force normal caused by the wall. But first, let's solve the problem. Bo, please get us started. Well, the plank is at rest and not rotating, so it is in static equilibrium. In other words, the net force acting on the plank is zero, and the net torque acting the plank about any axis of rotation is also zero. So we are going to sum the forces and sum the torques. So we need a free body diagram of all the forces acting on the plank. That is correct, Bo. Could you please give us that free body diagram? Sure. Uh, there is a force of gravity acting on the plank at its center of mass. There is also a force of gravity acting on the mass, which then acts on the wooden plank right where the mass is. The string causes a force of tension on the plank where it attaches to the plank and in the direction of the string. Clearly there is also a force normal acting to the right where the plank pushes against the wall. Thanks, Bo. Billy, please solve the problem from here. All right, let's start with the net torque. Uh, let's define counterclockwise or out of the board as the positive torque direction and pick our axis of rotation as... Uh, I, I think there's a force missing from our free body diagram. That is interesting, Bobby. What makes you say that? Well, if we pick the right end of the plank as our axis of rotation, the torque caused by the force of tension will be zero because it acts at the axis of rotation. Um, both forces of gravity will cause a torque in the counterclockwise or out of the board direction. Uh, the torque caused by the force normal will also be zero because the force normal acts directly toward the axis of rotation. Uh, that means the net torque about the right end of the plank, uh, according to our free body diagram, cannot equal zero, which we know is not true. Uh, the net torque does equal zero, so we must be missing a force which is causing a torque in the clockwise or into the board direction. It's the wall. The wall causes not only a force normal on the plank, but also a force of static friction. Uh, the force of static friction must be up in order to cause a torque which is into the board or clockwise about the right end of the plank because it will balance out the two torques caused by the two forces of gravity. Sorry, I, I missed that. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, I, I didn't see it at first either. Now that the free body diagram is complete, Billy, again, please solve the problem. Okay. To solve the problem, let, let's set the axis of rotation at the left end of the plank. That way the torques caused by the force of static friction and the force normal both equal zero. We do not know either of those forces, so having their torques both equal zero will make solving the problem easier. So the net torque on the plank about the left end of the plank equals the torque caused by the force of gravity on the plank, the torque caused by the force of gravity on the mass, and the torque caused by the force of tension in the string. With this new axis of rotation, both torques caused by the forces of gravity are clockwise or into the board, which is negative, and the torque caused by the force of tension is counterclockwise or out of the board, which is positive. And the net torque always equals rotational inertia times angular acceleration, the angular acceleration of the stationary plank is zero, so the net torque equals zero. That means we can move the two negative torques to the other side of the equation and then substitute in r value times force times the sine of theta 
with each appropriate subscript for each torque. And we can substitute in mass times acceleration due to gravity for each force of gravity. And the angle between the R value and both forces of gravity is 90 degrees and the sine of 90 degrees equals one. Mm. Then we can divide both sides by the R value times the sine of theta for force of tension to get the force of tension equals R for the plank times mass of the plank times acceleration due to gravity plus R for the mass times the mass of the mass times acceleration due to gravity, all divided by the quantity R for the force of tension times the sine of the angle for the force of tension. Very nice, Billy. Bobby, please substitute in numbers. Okay, the R value for the plank is, uh, well, it's half the length of the plank because the force of gravity of the uniform plank acts in its middle. So 0 0.395 divided by two or 0 0.1975 meters uh, times 0 0.764 times 9.81 plus the R value for the mass which is 0 0.274 meters, because that's how far the mass is from the axis of rotation, times 0 0.300 times 9.81, all divided by the quantity. Well, because the force of tension acts uh, the entire length of the plank away from the axis of rotation, the R value for the tension force is 0 0.395 uh, meters times the sine of 32.1 degrees, uh, and that is 10 uh, 10.8937 or 10.9 newtons with three sig figs. Great. Bo, please solve for the force normal from the wall on the plank. Sure. I, I guess we need to first determine the force of tension in the x direction. So draw the components of the force of tension. Cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, so the cosine for the theta for the force of tension equals the force of tension in the x direction divided by the force of tension. So the force of tension in the x direction equals force of tension times cosine of theta. That means the net force in the x direction on the plank equals force normal minus force of tension in the x direction. And the net force equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. The plank is not accelerating, so the net force equals zero. That means force normal equals force of tension in the x direction, which equals force of tension times cosine theta, or 10.8937 times cosine of 32.1 degrees, which equals 9.2283, or 9.23 newtons with three sig figs. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to demonstrate this. So here is what it looks like. But as you can see, the small area on the end of the force sensor made it so this setup was not very stable and did not last very long. But you can also see what the measured forces were. The tension force measured to be roughly 11 newtons, and the normal force measured to be roughly 8.6 newtons. 11 is quite close to 10.9, and 8.6 is close enough to 9.2 newtons for me to consider this a success. Now, I know we did not solve for the force of static friction, or if you prefer, the minimum coefficient of static friction to hold the plank on the wall. However, you are welcome to sum the forces in the y direction, or pick a different axis of rotation and sum the torques on the plank, and you will be able to solve for those. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.